Hello everyone, my name is Elliot and today I'm going to show you how to set up and implement new Unity's input system in a very very clean way. This method will be quite advanced, however once you're gonna set it up you'll see that managing it will be very easy. So before we start anything we're just going to set up some folders, we're just gonna call it scripts, then I'm going to create an empty game object, we're gonna call it game manager, create a simple 2D object and we are going to call it layer just to test things out all right so the first things first we need to install the uh, unity's input system go to windows and we're going to go to the package manager go to unity's registry scroll down and we should find input system right over here and we're just gonna hit install it and at the end it will ask you to reset the project and that's what we're going to do just click yes and it will reload your project meaning that the input system has been implemented we're gonna go to the scripts and in here we're going to create a new folder we're gonna call this folder input system and inside here we're going to create a input map now if you're not able to see it in here we're just gonna scroll all the way down until we're gonna see input actions and just create it and here we're going to call it input map call it however you want we're gonna open it and in here we're going to set up all the inputs so the first thing you should do is to create a new map which will be placed in this screen you can either right click it and add action map or just click on the plus and it will add action map and of course you can create as much as you want but just make sure that you are naming them properly so for example in the water this one in the land and then you can switch in between if you wish to and I'm just going to keep these two so I could show you how to set up both of them later on I'm going to start with the land so the first one what we need is the movement so we're just gonna call it movement before we start adding bindings we're gonna set the action type onto value on the control type we're gonna set it on vector 2 this will allow us to create for directional movement we'll rename this to keyboard or we can just call it WASD and we can duplicate it call this gamepad and in here now there should be a button called listen but this unity version is a little bit bugged but if you click this button once it starts listening to action just click any button and it will appear and this way you can set up all these inputs in here so left is going to be a now for gamepad left stick up left stick down if you have the controller plugged in you can use controller listening function and there we go we have the movement set and of course if you want to add extras like arrows add as much inputs as you want of course make sure that all these buttons are assigned properly and of course you have extra features in here but I'm going to demonstrate them once we're gonna set up the character movement and that's how you set up the movement the next thing we're gonna set up is a simple buttons like escape menu button we're gonna call it menu input we can call this movement input if you want to have clear names you're gonna have to type it manually escape and if you want to have a gamepad then you can just add another binding and we're gonna call this search on the gamepad click home button we're gonna leave it as a button duplicate the same input and I'm going to call this just to demonstrate as input call it action input now if you're using mouse then you can set mouse buttons so for example the right button left button to keep it simple I'm just going to press space and then I'm going to select shift at this point you can just customize it however you like I'm just going to demonstrate how buttons work and how to set them up properly on this occasion we're going to set up as a value and then we're gonna set it as any as you can see we have a lot of settings but mostly we are going to need just either value and any or button or just vector twos and value but if you have a 3d project obviously then you're gonna have to have mouse inputs aim all the setup will be the same except pass through vector 2 and then set as mouse delta this will give aiming or read what the mouse position is but we won't gonna need now so once you set up all your inputs hit save asset button and once we're gonna exit and if you don't have the script that generates after just make sure to click here generate c sharp class 
asset, ticket and apply. This will generate a script that will be very important for us. Once we're gonna save all the assets, it will regenerate the script. So just don't touch it, don't delete it, just keep it in here and everything will be fine. So now create another C sharp script and call it land input subscription. And in here, we're just going to delete everything from here. Then at the top, we're going to type in using unity engine dot input system and we're gonna start with setting up get set functions so first of all we're gonna need public vector 2 we're gonna call it move input get and private set and at the end we're gonna initialize it as zero next what we're going to need is a boolean public booleans mostly will be used for simple button inputs so it could be like jump or sprint menu input and here we're going to set the same thing get set and it equals to false and the final piece is going to be the another boolean call it let's just say action input it's gonna be set on false what we need to do now is to get access to the input map script call it underscore input and we're gonna set it to null this place will be set for variables once you have all your variables set we're going to create on enable event and on disable in here we're going to subscribe to inputs and in here we're going to unsubscribe initial the input map so we need to get access to the input map that we set up like this once we get reference to the script we need to initialize the the input map that we want underscore input dot per layer input land and we're going to set on enable and in here we're going to disable it this is at the start this is at the end now that we have access to the inputs we're going to subscribe to the inputs input dot land input get the movement input or the way you named all these things in here dot performed plus equal we're gonna set set movement and just type in like that and the reason why this is erroring at the moment is because we haven't set up the uh, context callbacks yet create void call it the same set movement and in brackets input action dot callback context ctx move input equals ctx dot read value and in brackets we're gonna say vector 2 because that's what we set in here now the code will look like that copy this and then we're gonna set the other one on cancelled when the inputs are pressed or for being performed and then cancel so we could reset them and now we're going to unsubscribe copy the same thing here but we're just going to minus it and that's how you subscribe to inputs set up a variable perform context callback reading in here and then apply this event into the subscription over here so now we're gonna set up an action input now since it's a simple button all we need to do is just void set action callback context and in here we're going to say action input equals ctx dot started what this does is basically checks if the input was pressed if it's active or not once you have that just copy these lines call this to action input and then we're going to unsubscribe but instead of performed we're going to say started and that's how you set up basic inputs that you need for the final input all we need to do is create an update function take the menu input because we really just need to press it once input menu equals input dot player land dot menu input was press this frame it will call this only once performed consistently check which button is pressed and started is just checking one button press the last frame so we're just checking once and just like that we have all the subscriptions done for example if you have a float value that mouse scroll uses so you can just say public float and just set it on zero here you can just say scroll equals read value and just inside here set float and if you want any other input copy these lines we haven't set it up but that's what you would type in and that's how you subscribe to all inputs that you need so just remember if it's vector 2 or vector 3 it's go mostly going to be performed simple buttons or just a one value just use started function or if you really need just a very simple button you can just set it up like this you can do the same thing with the jump you can customize it however you want so you just set up all the variables
variables right here. Then we're gonna get access to the input map and then we're going to initialize the input map, get the access to that script, reference a specific input map, perform the read values, pass through callback context. So vector two is for vector twos, simple buttons only context started. As you can see, it is a bit complex to learn, but once you get used to it, it's very easy. And of course, just don't forget to set the actions on the endings right over here, otherwise you're gonna get some errors. And we're going to go back to Unity. You remember we created two of these. Create another subscription file. Just make sure that it's renamed properly. So we can just say water input subscription. Get this script name. They rename it in here. This is land input subscription and this is water input subscription. And then you can just get the reference to water input map like this. If you have different inputs, then you will have to rework these and rework these. And as you can see, the code starts erroring mainly because we haven't set up any of these inputs. But if you will set it up, then you will have easy way of switching between two, two scripts like that. That's how you can customize and handle multiple input maps like this. In the game, you get reference to these two scripts and they just switch in between with the game logic. This is just showcasing. We can just delete this file so we wouldn't get any errors. And that's it. That's how you set up input map. All the inputs, explore, look around. And this is how you set up a subscription map. Now I'm going to showcase you how to actually use it. Normally it doesn't really matter where you're going to keep the subscription input script as long as you have it somewhere in the scene. And what I like to do most of the time is to set this input subscription script onto the game manager itself. Mainly because the game manager is going to be some file that you will always have and it's just good to have it somewhere in the scene. You can have it in the game manager and at the same time on the player itself. It's up to you what you want to do. However, we will need to get access to it. Create a simple player script, attach it onto the player and we're going to create a game manager script and we're going to attach the game manager onto the game manager and I'll show you two methods how you can get access to the script. So we're going to start with the game manager subscription script get input in awake method or start method we're just going to say get input equals get component script input like this and there you go now we have the access to the script use this method mainly because this input subscription script was attached to the game manager if you have some kind of a player and you want to get access you can do the same method or you can just initialize serialize field input back in unity if you go on the player you'll see this window appear here drag game manager onto here and then we will have access to the input subscription script so there are many ways you can do it these are just very basic ways to do it and now just to demonstrate how these inputs work, create a vector to player movement and an update function player movement equals new vector get input dot move input dot x and then get input move input dot y. Then on the player itself, we're going to attach rigid body rigid body to D RB RB dot velocity equals new vector two and just say either player movement dot X and player movement dot y then at the end you can just say time speed which we haven't set so we just say we're gonna set float speed is five and as you can see the character is moving fine and it's normalized as well and if you go back to the input system and you go to your inputs you can change that if you want to digital save asset and this will remove the normalized feature if you don't like it if you set this mode on analog with the keyboard it won't gonna change anything however if you go back again set gamepad as analog and save it analog will allow the character have speed variation as you can see i'm pressing a very little amount and the character is moving slowly but if i'm gonna go full on then the character will move fast but if i'm gonna press slightly push slightly then as you can see the character moves slower so that's what the analog feature mode does it's really up to you what you really need i prefer to keep it everything on digital normalized you can customize it however you want and if you want to perform checks like for example when is it moving to the left when it's moving to the right all you have to do is just type in if statement input.x and if it's more than zero, then it means that it's going right, less 
then it's going to the left more or less, then it's going to be up or down. This is how you check if the character is going up or down. Very good to have it for animations. In terms of animations, you can just say if input not equal to vector to zero, then it means that the character is moving, else, you know, idle. And that's how you can have uh, multiple checks and if specific inputs are being pressed or not. Now we're just going to implement the basic inputs like action. If get input action is performed or if not performed by just adding the exclamation mark in the front, call it debug log. And if we're gonna check that and if I press place, there we go, we got some performance. However, as you can see, this button has been performed multiple times, mainly because we have it in the update function. So the best thing would be create extra variables like a boolean in here, just to prevent a loop or just some kind of a timer and that's it. And you can do the same thing with the menu, just input.menu input, press escape. And as you can see, I'm holding escape and it only just plays once, even it's being inside the update function. And that's pretty much for the inputs. Uh, now, if you want to update the input map, you can customize it anytime you want. Add new function, jump, for example, input. So we're gonna set it on random buttons like J, H, add as much inputs as you want, anytime, anywhere. Action input, we can add another input as well. Let's just say on T, pause menu on P, for example. Under the names, you can set as much inputs as you want. Just make sure that all your naming, all the headings remaining the same way. Because once you're gonna set the asset, save the asset, and if I'm gonna press the play button again, and if I'll press P, as you can see, the menu is opening, and you don't need to recode absolutely anything because the main structures have been coded. You can customize it any way you want, just keep these input actions, these naming systems the same way. And of course, just to implement the jump button quickly, we're going to set up another public bool we're gonna get set false if you want a single input button just say player land dot jump input was pressed last frame and that's it it will work button will be performed once and if you want to have a continuously performed jump button then you're gonna have to copy this function set jump jump input and just have that instead and that's it so i have inputs implemented save it and of course every time you edit these inputs just don't forget to save the asset so the subscription file could read what it is that you've set up back in the player script we can just get input jump input and just say of course in here you can apply your own logic everything's moving pressing space action is performed press j jump was pressed and if I'm holding J for a moment let me just open the console see it doesn't jump twice so you don't need to have that lock function if you set it up as was performed last frame but if you set up as a a continuous button value then console will continue printing out the inputs and that's the basics for now if you have any questions or you need to showcase advanced inputs like using Cine machine leave in the comments down below what you want to learn or what questions you have I'll make sure Sure to answer them. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next video.